Question 6. In a similar vein, how does a convex lens make light diverge? So again, the official explanation for diverging sun rays is that the Earth's atmosphere refracts the sun's light like a lens. But the Earth's atmosphere is apparently a convex curve. So that would act like a convex lens and converge the light, concentrate it like a magnifying glass. You'd need a concave lens to make light diverge as we observe. Now, some have said that it is actually the angles between layers of clouds that seem to make the light diverge. But again, observation says that this is not the case. Here, there is nothing between the plane and the cloud, and the light is clearly diverging. And this NASA photograph is taken from above the clouds. And still, the sun's proximity is apparent. So, how does the atmosphere make light diverge? Question 7. Why doesn't the artificial horizon on a plane roll backwards during straight and level flight? The artificial horizon is based on a gyroscope. And when a gyroscope spins, it resists movement away from the axis of spin. As for rigidity in space, the spinning rotor remains in its original attitude, while the gimbals and base move around it. In other words, the gyro maintains its axis in relation to space and not to the surface of the Earth. If a gyro moves around the Earth, its axis is vertical to the Earth's surface here, at an angle here, and horizontal here. The gyro will resist any force that attempts to change its plane of rotation. So the artificial horizon is essentially a gyroscope mounted on gimbals to allow it to stay upright as the plane pitches and rolls. So as the plane flies straight and level and rounds the curvature of the Earth, the gyroscope in the artificial horizon will remain upright with respect to where it was first spun up to speed. And the indicator will appear to roll backwards and indicate a climb. Now, I asked the pilots of the last flight I was on, and they told me that the artificial horizon has GPS and sophisticated electronics that adjust the indicator depending on where they are on Earth. But when I contacted a manufacturer, I was told that it is a purely mechanical device, no GPS, no electronics, and it hasn't changed in basic design since before the advent of electronics. So, why doesn't the artificial horizon roll backwards as they round the curvature of the Earth? Question 8. Why is the Coriolis effect so selective? This is an explanation of the Coriolis effect by a gun expert. One of the common issues is that we see is the Coriolis effect. And what guys are not doing is taking into account the effect that this can have on your shooting at longer ranges. Now, real quick, let's kind of just uh, explain the Coriolis effect in layman's terms. Uh, the Coriolis effect is the effect that when the bullet leaves the barrel of the gun, it is actually leaving the surface of the earth. So as the bullet leaves the, the barrel of the gun, the earth is still rotating and the bullet is not rotating with the earth. So the earth will actually rotate out from underneath of the bullet while it is in flight. So bullets and artillery shells no longer rotate with the earth when they leave the surface. And according to this explanation, paper airplanes act in the same way. So imagine you were standing in Texas and had a magic paper airplane that could travel hundreds of miles. If you threw your airplane directly northward, you might think it would land straight north, maybe somewhere in Nebraska. But Texas is actually spinning around Earth's axis faster than Nebraska is because it's closer to the equator. That means that the paper airplane is spinning faster as well. And when you throw it, that spinning momentum is conserved. 
So if you threw your paper airplane in a straight line toward the north, it would land somewhere to the right of Nebraska, maybe in Delaware. So from your point of view in Texas, the plane would have taken a curved path to the right. If this is the case for bullets, artillery shells and paper airplanes, then why is it not the same for real airplanes? Airplanes do not aim north to go east. In fact, if aircraft no longer rotate with the Earth when they leave the surface, then east to west flights should take much longer than west to east flights. And landing on a moving runway would seem to be quite tricky. Every landing should be like this. And wouldn't there be planetary direction indicators by runways, just like there are wind direction indicators? So, why is the Coriolis effect so selective? Question 9. What is the International Space Station flying over? Whatever it is, it kind of looks a bit like what I imagine the Earth to look like, but it can't be. If you choose a feature on this blue and white thing and follow it, you'll notice its speed towards the camera is constant. From the moment it appears on the horizon, it moves at the same speed until it disappears below the camera. But watch this footage from a plane. When something appears on the horizon, it moves slowly, but the closer it gets, the faster it moves. In just the same way that we see distant things move towards us in real life. Now look again at this thing. Everything is moving at the same constant speed. Now that tells me that what we're looking at does not span thousands of miles, but rather hundreds of yards. So what is it that the ISS is flying over? And while we're on the subject of the ISS, question 10. How can microgravity be selective? Watch these people bobbing around in microgravity. Tonight our Earth will have completed another orbit around the Sun and now we take stock of what we accomplished over the past year and what we hope to accomplish in the year ahead. As we look back at the achievements of the past year, 2008 was the year when the space station... Did you notice the problem? Watch it again. As we look back at the achievements of the past year, 2008 Did you see the water the drip in the background? In this sequence, I want you to keep your eye on the ketchup bottle once it's placed on the table. Right here you can see that there is nothing on the bottom of the bottle, no velcro or magnets, it's just an ordinary bottle. And in a moment, you'll see the ketchup bottle being placed on the table. Now, keep your eye on it. again. It's clearly under the influence of so-called gravity. How can microgravity be selective? Question 11. Why are there craters on the Moon? If the Moon used to be much closer to the Earth, slowly moving away from us, and is tidally locked to the Earth so that only one side is ever visible, then why are there impact craters on the one side of the moon that is protected by the Earth? I am guessing that you will repeat the same story that the moon's gravity has been protecting the Earth by hoovering up meteors and asteroids, but shouldn't the Earth's much larger gravitational field have been gathering up these meteors and asteroids and protecting the moon? 
So how are comets, meteors and asteroids able to pass through the Earth or avoid the Earth's gravity to be able to hit the face of the Moon that's shielded by the Earth? And finally, question number 12. Why don't you find permanent hills, mountains and valleys in the ocean? The Earth is not a smooth ball, nor is it perfectly spherical. There are huge geological features such as the Mariana Trench and undersea mountain ranges. In fact, by some accounts, the Earth without the oceans actually looks like this. We observe water behaving like this and like this but you say it behaves like this. So why doesn't it behave like this? If the oceans are pulled to the Earth by gravity and the strength of that gravity varies with the distance from the centre of the Earth, then why doesn't the water follow the shape of the seabed? Now, Mr. Tyson, these are legitimate questions posed to you in all seriousness. I think the questions are simple and straightforward, and I've clarified them for you. So I'd appreciate clear, straightforward answers. I am emailing you these questions, posting them on your Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as a few other avenues. So, in the words of Douglas Adams, if you manage not to respond, I'll know that you're trying not to. I'll know that you're trying very, very hard indeed. Yours sincerely, Allegedly Dave, England. Flat, Flat Earth, Earth wins. wins.